hello friends uh, I'm going to start with this video presentation on dead time compensation and this is going to be explained in a number of parts we are with the part one of course uh, you know I am Dr. Mandeep Singh working as a professor in the Department of Electrical and Instrumentation Engineering in Thapan Institute of Engineering and Technology friends uh, we will see that we are going back to the previous course on process dynamics and control where we had a little bit of introduction on dead time elements we will revise these elements a little bit before we go in for this course on advanced process control wherein we will see how to tackle with these dead time elements First of all, we will see what are the issues on account of these dead time elements. We will revise a little and then later in the next session, we will go in for how to tackle, how to manage and how to deal with, how to compensate for these dead time elements. Just to start with, I may tell you that this dead time element is known by lot number of other names like you have transportation lag it is sometimes called pure delay it's also known as distance velocity lag so let us see if we have if you can see the pointer over here if you have a pipe of length l in which there is some fluid which is flowing with velocity v so the moment it's entering over here it will take some time before it moves out from here and if there is some temperature which is changing over here the same change in temperature will happen at this point after a certain delay on account of the transport of material from the left hand side to the right hand side of this pipe and this is exactly what is called dead time or pure delay or distance velocity lag now let us see how much will this distance uh, time lag will be there it depends upon the volume of the pipe divided by the volumetric flow rate and as you can see over here this comes out to be nothing but the length of the tube divided by the velocity average velocity of the flow happening over this period now if at all at time t is equal to zero you see that the temperature was moving at an A along curve A then the same effect will be felt at the outlet of the pipe along the curve B and this will be taking place exactly after time T is equal to TD and this TD is given by the expression as we have seen over here L divided by U that is length of the pipe divided by the average velocity so finally we find that the temperature which is function of T at the outlet is given by whatsoever was the function at inlet but with the difference that now it is not function of T now it is function of T minus TD and this TD is again it is the dead time it is also known as transportation lag or pure lag or even distance velocity lag so let's move on further to see that if at all we have a first order system and this first order system is having some dead time on account of any transportation maybe it's transportation of the material or maybe it's transportation of the signal or whatsoever then mathematically speaking if the first order system is P divided by tau ps plus 1 along with it we have a dead time and the dead time is represented by e the power minus tds so this is how we move around if the transfer function of first order system is kp upon tau ps plus 1 and the transfer function of dead time is e to the power minus tds so the final transport along with the transport delay the final transfer function will be given by as these are connected in series this will be multiplication of the two if at all we have a second order system with the delay on the same account we will have the transfer function kp upon 
tau square s square plus 2 zeta tau s plus 1 it will also get multiplied by e the power minus t d s so this is what we see is happening over here as you can see over here uh, in case of first order system this curve is represented by the delay as by this curve this is in case of first order system in case of second order system if the second order system is under damped then this response is getting delayed by time and you are getting the delayed second order response in this form in case it is critically or over damped then this response gets converted into this response moving further this delay can be approximated as first order approximation or second order approximation known as Paddy's approximation these approximations are not very good approximations which we have seen it over the simulink also in some of the previous uh, you know sessions in the last semester this is the first order uh, Paddy's approximation and second order approximation is given by this equation which we have tried on the symbolink I will encourage you also to go in for the same now if we consider a kind of open loop transfer function whose transfer function is given by kc e to the power minus tds divided by 0 0.5 s plus 1 i am deliberately keeping this kc as kc it's it's fixed i can take it as 1 to start with because this is the uh, feedback when we go in for proportional controller with gain KC. In that case, we'll be using KC. Right now, we are not making use of this KC. And we find if you plot a uh, Bode plot of this, then we will do it for three different time delays. We will choose the time delay of TD is equal to 0 0.01 minute. It is in minute. It has to be converted into second. And then you see in that case, the crossover frequency will be 160, as you can see from the Bode plot over here. And the ultimate gain will be 80. In case, this is quite acceptable as such. In case, this time delay increases from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1, then this crossover frequency, it reduces to 17 and the ultimate gain also reduces to 8.56 and in case this delay is one minute then what happens in that case the crossover frequency becomes 2.3 which is definitely on the much much lower side and accordingly the ultimate gain also becomes very less it's just 1.52 it means what the crossover frequency is less means even the lesser frequency disturbances can make it unstable. The system becomes more sensitive to even lower frequency disturbances. And in case you want to control it using some kind of P controller, in that case you cannot use very large uh, value of Kc, very large value of gain because the ultimate value of gain is 1.5. It means we have to keep this ultimate gain in picture we have to make our gain of the controller lesser than 1.5 it means with lesser gain the system will be sluggish so not only will the system be sluggish system will also be sensitive to all kind of disturbances so this is the crux of the thing that in case the delay increases the crossover frequency decreases and the ultimate gain also decreases and we conclude finally that the dead time it is something not very very good something which makes the system sensitive it makes the system unstable the moment we apply any kind of control over it and in case of large dead time the system tends to become sluggish because we cannot make use of a high value of gain in case of any kind of p or pi or pid controller so the nutshell is that dead time elements are not good and we have to deal with these kind of things now how do you deal with these kind of things it's something which we will be dealing with in the next session so guys keep watching and we will be soon coming up with the next video where everything which we have seen over here will be explained further with the compensations 
which are required to deal with this dead time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.